solving equations using the graphing calculator. We've looked at solving equations the old school way where you do the same thing on each side of the equation until the letter is by itself. We've looked at the magic bridge method where things are moved across the bridge until the letter is by itself. We learned about the equation solver operation on the graphing calculator that solves for an unknown if we can get one side equal to zero first. In this video today, we're going to learn to enter equations here and then graph them here to see where the graph crosses the x-axis. And this two-dimensional graph can be changed to a number line graph and plotted there. This point represents the solution x equals 7. Let's solve this first equation, 3 minus 2n equals 13. Just like using equation solver, we need to get 0 by itself on one side of the equation. We can use the magic bridge method again for this. We can move the 13 to the left side of the bridge. Over here, on the left side of the bridge, it becomes negative 13. And over here, on the right side, we have 0 left. We press the y equals key so we can enter our equation. We need, however, to change the n to an x for it to work here in the function editor. So here it is entered in y1. We graph by pressing graph or zoom 6 if we want to get a standard window. We see the x-intercept here. If we count from the origin it looks like uh, the answer is x or in this case n it equals negative 5. Let's look at the table view by pressing second then graph on our calculator and we get this view. We can scroll up to where we see that y1 equals 0 and that proves that our answer is in fact n equals negative 5. Now we have our check which we do by going back to the home screen of our calculator by pressing second then the button right next to it which is quit then back to our original equation. We store our answer, negative 5 for n, but we can just use x because it's easier to do. So we press negative 5, storage, x, enter. And then we enter that left side of the equation, 3 minus 2x. And since we get 13, we know that negative 5 is the correct answer. Check. Here's another problem. It seems more difficult with unknowns on each side of the equal sign. We need to get one of the sides equal to zero. Let's set up the bridge to make it happen. Let's move the terms on the left to the right side. Moving to the other side of the bridge, the 5x becomes negative 5x and the 18 becomes negative 18. And since we have nothing left on the left, we can just put zero there. We got to our function editor by pressing y equals. Since we have one side equal to zero, we can put this in y1. Then we pre press graph or zoom 6. It looks like the line crosses at 8, meaning the value of x is 8. We check out the table view by pressing second, then graph. Then we scroll down to see where x is 8. We see that when x is 8, y is 0. Now here's another problem. Stop the video and see if you can solve it by graphing on the calculator. To me, the easiest way to solve one side for 0 is to move the 10 over to the left side of the equal sign. So now we have minus 10 on the left side and 0 on the right side. Now we go to y equals in the calculator and put the left side in. We have to remember that the function editor y equals only works with the variable x. We graph it by pressing graph or zoom 6. 
we can see by where the function crosses the x-axis that the value of y is 4. We test the value of y equals 4 by taking the original equation, substituting 4 for y, and typing in the left side of the equation. So we see that since it equals 10, 4 is the right answer. Check. Let's look at one with unknowns on each side of the equal sign. Again, I invite you to stop the video and see if you can solve it by graphing on the calculator, then restart it to see if you got the correct answer. Let's move the terms on the left over to the right. Now on the left we have 0 on the right, the opposite of the original terms that were on the left. We press y equals to get to the function editor and put it in y1. Then graph or zoom 6. It looks like x is negative 1. Let's check negative 1 as the right answer by going back to the original equation, store negative 1 for x, then enter each side of the equation and see if you get the same thing. And since both sides of that equation are 16, we know that negative 1 is the correct solution. Check. With all the different ways of solving equations, let's look at some advantages of solving problems this way, which is solving one side of the equation for 0, then graphing. Where the line crosses the x-axis is the answer. Other equations besides linear equations can be evaluated using this method. For instance, this is an absolute value equation with two solutions that appear along the x-axis as on a number line. Or even a quadratic equation can show one, two, or no solutions using this method. Thanks for viewing. I hope this video has been helpful and enjoyable.